Good morning and welcome to Yoga Solutions. I hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you are on this beautiful planet of ours. And um, yes, I'd, I'd, let's get on with the content. So uh, today I wanted to talk about um, the, the meaning of spinal extension. It's um, the, the ideas that we have about um, extending the spine as in um, sending it into a extension curve. I, I don't mean elongating the spine, although that's, that's part of it. Um, what I'm talking about is when we want to do back bends, essentially. Um, yeah, the, the, the definition that we suffer from is um, basically it's limited. Uh, from my perspective, there are, there are kind of two kinds of extension. There's passive extension and active extension, just like there's passive flexion and active flexion. You know, if, if you, um, let's start with that actually, why not? Um, if I go to a broader scene, yeah. So, um, passive, ex uh, passive flexion, for example, is where you just flop your weight forwards. And the result is quite painful. It, it uh, pulls on your spine. The, the weight of the body hanging forwards will pull on the base of the spine. It will pull on your. It will make your upper back round out more, uh, whilst you hang off it. And that's a kind of yeah. It's a passive version of it. And the thing with these movements is they're kind of meant to be part of your movement rather than part of your. Uh, resting strategy if you like so um, if you're moving into forward bend what you need to do is actively uh, flex from a change in your core so instead of hanging your weight down and sitting on top of your organs which will uh, uh, restrict your movement and not, not be very nice for your spine what you do is you draw your belly back and drawing your belly back if your back is relaxed then that will bring you forwards. And the, the, the result, pr provided that you can kind of drop your weight uh, as you breathe and drop your weight, and I'm talking about dropping your weight through your base as you breathe and as you release the breath, then you, these core actions of, that are bringing you into forward bend will also be supported by the breath, as in when you let go of your weight through your base and breathe, uh, your back is supported. So you're not hanging off your upper back, you're creating a direct reversal of the lumbar spine, not by sitting on your organs, but by actually moving from within. So your core draws back, your chest can rest over the drawn back core, and that will allow you to forward bend. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and if you, if you try that, you'll probably find that you have less restriction in the hamstrings and other things that would normally be in the way of you forward bending. Now, so uh, to clarify that, the thing that makes a forward bend a kind of functional action is the active engagement from your core to bring you into forward bend. So the belly pulling back brings you forwards without you having to, without you sort of collapsing your weight against the space that you're trying to create really in order to be able to forward bend if that makes any sense uh yeah it's a thing i say all the time i don't know whether whether it actually elicits the inquiry as to whether it makes sense or not but uh, do, do see if what i'm talking about makes some sort of sense to you now the trouble with extension is that most people do it by actively extending from the lower back and actively extending from the neck basically lifting your weight um, it's not illegal you know it's it's a way of doing it it's a way of bending backwards or it's a way of coming up but active extension is meant to come from the thoracic spine like active forward bend comes from the, th the belly moving back and I didn't mention it but the throat moving back and the chest sort of emptying away from the throat. Active extension needs to come from the rib cage, basically. So it's it's not you lifting your ribs with your lower back 
although that will give you a, an extension at the join between the lumbars and the thoracic. But the source of the movement needs to come from the, a direct reversal of the thoracic spine. And not everyone could access that movement. Because, why? Because they, when they rest in flexion, they hang off the upper spine, they hang their weight off the upper spine, and when, they, and when you add lifting with the neck and lifting with the lumbars, the upper spine doesn't get a look in, it doesn't get to move. So, um, how, how do we actively extend from the upper spine? Well, it's to do with your relationship to space. It's to do with um, the, the upper spine won't move, basically, when you're, when you're either using your limbs, your body, to pull the spine around. So if you're stretching, if you're reaching out of yourself, um, the upper spine can't really be involved in that. It's, it's being pulled on to take you somewhere. And if you're pulling yourself up, the upper spine doesn't get a look in because you're lifting with the spine below it. And uh, which kind of locks the upper spine into, a, into its curve. So in order to get the source of the movement to, uh, of the extension movement to come from the upper spine, uh, from the spine between the base of the neck and, the, and below the heart, essentially, that, that part, it's a relationship to space. It's the way, um, if you were to uh, lift your face and then kind of try and look over a wall, uh, that, that sort of expression, lift, lift your face and try and look beyond into the distance over a wall, there'll be a natural kind of elongation of the throat. And in order to remain grounded, the chest will drop away from it. And that creates the, that intention of being forwards and up in space with your face whilst remaining grounded creates a movement down from the bump of the base of the neck through to the thoracic spine. Uh, I sometimes talk about it like, um, you know, if you present your left cheek for a kiss and you mean it, you know, <laughs> add a bit of sort of that true intention and your body will respond appropriately. What you're kind of extending and opening out into space from the heart, essentially, which is makes sense. You know, uh, you need a you need a good reason for extending from the heart. You know, so if you present your right cheek to space, and it's not just a peck on the cheek; it's a it's a kiss that you really want from someone you truly, truly like. You know? So you, you present the face in anticipation of this lovely feeling, and that that engagement from you will cause the spine to move from the bump of the base of the neck down so that you can extend in space. Um, the shoulders have to join in so if you're someone that hangs off the upper spine then the shoulders will be sitting forwards which uh, may, means that you're likely to lift your face from your neck rather than from the whole of the spine. So uh, a sort of slight hug from the shoulders as you know, you can leave your hands on, on your lap, for example, but the shoulder needs to come back away from your ear as you present your face on that side for a kiss. And that will, that will allow the spine to sit forwards and, and get a little bit more support from the shoulder being behind it. So you're kind of suspended through your shoulder. Do the same on the other side. So that, that's an example of how to extend from the thoracic spine. Now when we're doing postures, um, you've got the issue of not passively extending from the, from the lumbars and neck. So let's quickly show you that. So for example, um, one of my, one of my favorite postures, uh, it's kind of almost my, my, <laughs> it could be my logo, you know, it's uh, this one, I, I call it new vision. It's, it's, it's some sort of warrior pose, I think. Um, but the trouble is when, when we do standing back bends, we tend to just lean our weight back on the heels, which creates compression uh, in the secondary curves of the spine. So um, I'm a bit bright on that screen. Let me just uh, turn that down a bit. So, you know, if you've lifted yourself in the first place and then 
um, sit your weight back over the heels, the outcome of that is, is a kind of pinching of your lumbers. And if you do, if you sit your head back from your neck, then you get a pinching of the neck. What you, the, the thing we're getting wrong is we're leaning back. Um, extension from the spine doesn't come back, come from you leaning your weight back. It comes from your upper spine moving forwards. And so if you can get that attitude uh, from your upper body and your shoulders, then you can get a sense of how the spine can extend. Now, but if it's led by the lumbers, then you're going to have lower back uh, pinching and the upper back won't be able to move because you're doing the extension from the lower back. So how do we, how do we deal with this? There's all sorts of problems around bracing around the base of the spine, uh, pushing the pelvis forwards, for example, uh, would give you quite a, a strong pinch around the base of the spine. So that, that's one compensatory thing you can do is tuck your tail under, but doing so kind of stops you from extending because you're holding one end of the spine um, in, a, in an attitude that doesn't allow you to extend. So what, what do we need? Well, I've looked at this quite um, a lot. You know, what is it that we are looking for? Instead of all the details of what we're doing to various parts of our body, what's the quality that allows the spine behind the heart to rest forwards, to feel like I'm, it rests forwards through the body? And, and the answer is when I can f imagine or if I can feel support behind me, so instead of me trying to hold that leg straight behind me, if the uh, weight is on the front of the foot a little, the sense of meeting that space, sense of the weight of the heel being sent away from me, it's not me straight, straightening my leg, it's me leaning from the underside of the foot to the back of the leg, uh, leaning that limb into some kind of imagined support. That I can rest into. And the same with the front limb. Instead of holding the leg bent and putting my weight down, I uh, start with weight on the front of the foot, then the, the feeling can be that the thigh drops because I'm sitting, I'm resting the underside of the leg into support. So the weight will be less on your heels, it'll be more on the fronts of the feet and then something has to be done, basically send your heels down away from you in order to find the, to meet the support behind the legs. And then for the lower back, um, that'll probably get you working on the outside of the hips. For the, to, to let go of that, it, it's not wrong, it's just we kind of want to reduce the need to brace and hold. So, you know, once the thighs have come up either side of you, you kind of want to relax it. And the way you do that is by drawing the lower belly back and up so that when you rest down over it through the ribs, you get a sense of being able to rest into the space behind the pelvis as well as underneath the legs, behind the legs. So I want to I wanna rest back into the support behind my legs and behind my pelvis, behind my lower back. And if I do that and I meet that support, and then from the other end, I meet space with my presenting my face for a kiss. If the shoulders are a problem, you can grab hold of a hand or something and drop the shoulders from that. But the face presenting forwards as the chest falls away from it with the heels, means that not only is there space behind my legs for my legs to lean into, not only is there space behind my pelvis for my relaxed pelvis to rest into, but there's also space behind my lower back, like I'm sitting on a sofa. And at no point do I get heavy on the heels. And from that, I can simply allow Provided the face is in space and the shoulders are out of the way, I can allow the chest 
to fall away from my face as I release the breath and as I release into the space behind my legs with the heels going down. And the result of that is an opening from the spine behind the heart. Now, I, I like to play with one hand up and one hand down so that I can play with these leanings. When I, when I feel like I'm, there's a lot of kind of muscular effort in the, in the calf muscle of the back leg, that's just my toes working. And I, I understand that to be a surface that I can lean into. But what I'm looking for is to be able to let go of my weight. So when I let go of my chest, it sits on my heels without my heels being too heavy. When I, if I find myself bracing around the hips, I've got to let the hips find a way of trusting the space behind me as I release the breath. So that I have somewhere to rest. If I've got, if my head feels heavy, then I need to find a way of feeling like there's support behind my head that I can rest into, not me holding my head up with my throat. And that comes from the breathing and the release of the breath in the chest with the core coming up away from the ground. So that I get the feeling of resting back. Okay, so that was more complete than I, I've been doing recently. Uh, that should um, give you enough to work with. Um, yes, yeah, so, so for, the, for my silver members, I, I, I'm going to have a go at um, showing you how to develop the um, action of extension from the thoracic spine in movements towards cobra, um, just starting lying on your front. So I'll do that next, and um, for those of you on Facebook and YouTube and whatnot, I, I shall see you the same time, same place next week. Much love. Oh, uh, by the way, if, if you want to get access to the kind of completed guided sessions of these yoga solutions, become a silver member. It's, a, it's about a pound a week, and you get a, a new class every week, and um, uh, you also get access to the 150 or so um, yoga solutions I've done so far. Uh, there's, there's, there's probably more than that. Uh, there, there's hundreds of them. I've been, I've been doing this for a few years now. And uh, they're all sort of um, listed. And they've all got titles and you can even do a search function if you're looking for something specific. Um, and yeah, okay. Anyway, that, that's me for now. Uh, come and join me for my workshop on Saturday is another option cheapest chips to drop in, especially if you go view only, which means uh, I don't interact with you. But um, and, and if you can't make it for Saturday morning, uh, that you buy the view only option and, I, and you get the, the, the download and people say when they watch the uh, recordings, it's like they're being taught live because the stuff I'm talking about seems to relate to what's going on for them. So uh, yeah, anyway, that, that's enough from me. Um, much love to you. I'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye now.